completely forgot to record this. And then I'm gonna post it on YouTube. So it, the YouTube video will start right here and then we'll go along with it. You lose. Ugh. I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him hard. Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? April 20th, 9.37 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 3. Panicked. Palms sweaty. I can admit it. I'm nervous. Ah, good morning. G good morning, sir. You look tense, Justice. Wound up tight? Oh, wound up, sir? No, I'm loose. I'm fine. That screeching noise. Is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected. Your first trial, and it's a homicide, I guess. Justice doesn't s uh, start small, eh? I'm fine. I got up at 5 a.m. to do my Chords of Steel voice workout. I'm fine. Ah, uh, that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality to your speech. <coughs> I overdid it again. As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down if you get my drift. Drift gotten, sir. I'm all over that drift. <laughs> As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Yes, yes, I'm fine, sir. One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. People might take you the wrong way. Well, I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. And today is my first trial. Not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of murder. My boss wants to help him, help, help him out, of course, and so do I. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him, no way. The man, the myth, the legend. Phoenix Wright! Whoa! Good, uh, morning. Morning. It's all up to you today. First trial, nervous, meeting him. Cardiac arrest. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, help. So, you're fine, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, Mr. Fine, is it? Uh, I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. <laughs> um... Are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney, and he's your friend, so why... You'll see. Uh, you can do it. Be confident. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean, I mean, I... It's time, shall we? Y yes sir Ooh, jeez. Okay, I need to focus. If I... Yeah, I can just save it whenever I want. Which I am gonna do. Always want to save it. Turn about Trump. Trial day one. So the the first trial is always the one that is gonna be not it's gonna be the shortest one. Not gonna lie, you said the man, the myth, the legend. I thought Fluffy Man appeared. <laughs> if only GG would appear to one of my streams, it would be nice, but you know, can't have that. Uh man. Anyways, okay, I need to focus. First trial, here comes justice.
All right. April 20th, 10 a.m., district court, courtroom number two. Oh, man, it's so, it's so, that court is now in session. The prosecution is ready, your honor. Uh, the defense is, uh, fine, I mean, ready, your honor. Mind going blank, don't panic, eh, too late. Your name was Mr. Justice? And this is your first trial? Y yes your honor, but I'm fine, really. Are you quite sure? Your voice sounds a bit strained. <coughs> uh, Mr. Gavin? Yes, Your Honor. I was under the impression that you would be he uh, heading this up this case. That was my intention, yes. However, a defense attorney must always cede to his client's wishes. And my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course he wants justice. But to entrust his case to this greedhorn, why? I do not ex exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience, fine. But does he have cords of steel? <laughs> then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. This is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see, Mr. Uh, long time no see, Mr. Wright. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player. Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Pine. To think I saw you enter this room a fresh attorney, and now I'll see you leave in chains. Ah, Winston Pine. Subtle as ever, I see. <clears throat> the crime occurred at the Borchlet Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him. Wham, on the head, smack, killed him cold. Hmm. A customer at the restaurant, you say? And the defendant, you say, he was? The pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright? A pianist? This is the weapon that took the victim's life, a bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. Deadly bottle added to the court record. <laughs> Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filled in the court record. Ah, yes, that court's record! It is back! <laughs> I am gonna save it, though. Make a practice of checking it frequently. And we can look at the court record with E. Uh, attorney's badge. How long did I yearn for one of these? Just putting it on makes me feel ready. Smith's autopsy report. The time of death was around 2 a.m., April 17th. Death caused by single blow to forehead. The sub-basement at the Borchelet Bowl Club and then grape juice bottle used as a murder weapon bears the defendant Mr. Wright's prints. All right. The court record. Right. I've heard of that. Use E to look at the evidence so far. I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Right. Just use E. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action. So, the victim was a customer at the restaurant. But just who was this, um, Shaddy Smith fellow? We believe he was a traveler, your honor. A traveler? According to his passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. He had only returned to this country recently, through his place of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That, too, is unclear at present, Your Honor. We believe they first met at the Borshit Bow Club on the night of the crime. If they had only just met, then why murder? Perhaps the victim slided, uh, slided the defendant's piano playing? That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skills. At least, not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second. Isn't poker gambling? 
That's a crime in of itself! <laughs> Indeed, it appears our defendant has fallen to be, uh, has fallen to become the, b the basest sort of criminal. Objection! Is it true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim? Yet was only that a game in the purest sense, a competition, your honor. A, a competition? Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs weathered in blue flame. No, it's fine. Uh, known its final outcome. All right, come again. The playing cards on the table had blue backs, your honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mysti uh, mystify these presents and impress women. That will be our first order of business here, then. To find out more about this fatal game of cards. Oh, great. Okay, here we go. Very well, defendants. I'm going to save it here because... This is bad. All right. Not bad. It's just the start of the um, cross-examination. Very well, defendants. You will testify to the court about the poker competition, held the night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it. My first trial. Here goes nothing. All right. Time for the witness testimony. The competition. I am a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is uh, to take on interested customers over at the poker table. The room where we play uh, and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy. Hmm. A pianist who can't play piano. Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, your honor. My first cross-examination. Don't blow it. Are you alright? You're sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? It's a figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times. No, you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? What to do? Should I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher course on cross-examination? Nah, I've got this! No need for help here, sir. I think I've got this one covered. I think you'd better do more than think. You know it, or you don't, or you do not. I'm fine. The cords of steel are ready for battle. My weapon, press and present. Or present. Find the inconsistencies, any lies in the testimony, and reveal them to the courts. That is cross-examination. Learn it. Know it. Do it. Inconsistencies. Lies. Phoenix Wright? As if. Phoenix Wright would never lie, and it's up to me to prove it. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Cross-examination. I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. Hold it. Hold it! You can hardly play? Oh, I play sometimes when customers demand it. So I play them one song. That's usually all they want. Is that supposed to be a boas just now? <laughs> the title of pianist is a mask. A respectable face I wear for the world at large. Then why are you really at the Borshet Bowl Club? My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. HOLD IT! They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I am a professional after all. Bah! Do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Yes. Yes, your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. What? I've played poker for seven years in that little room. And I've never lost once. What? You see why the customers come now. Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. What? Wait, you've never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once. Is that even possible? The room we played in and the competition in, uh, in the competition in there are the club's main attractions. HOLD IT! The room in the crime scene, uh, in the crime scene photo is an attraction. It has quite a history. Actually, 
The Borshit Bull Club used, uh, used it uh, used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. Uh, black market? All in the past, things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice to it to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room. A smoky room gambling hood and, you know, just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. The bosses, the bosses gather around the table cutting deals safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through the small window. I can practically picture it now. That window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout for but little e uh, but little else. The room had a few other tricks to it, though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room ste uh, steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good fu uh, clean fun. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. Hold it! Two decks of cards. A simple measure to pre uh, prevent cheating. If you alter two decks, no one can slip it in cards. There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. Precisely. Cards on the table, cards upon the floor. Each one forming a complete deck. A crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. Indecently, we used two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards was red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall in poker, you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. <laughs> yes, a game of hands. Hmm. This competition you're talking about. I believe the court understands the nature of the game uh, significantly. Th that's right. It was a simple game after all. Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over si uh, over simplest simple games, Mr. Justice. Defend it. You were in the room the very moment uh, the crime occurred. Yet you claim no connection to the crime. Now that's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the, uh, the rules, Your Honor. Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. Ah! Uh, I completely let that one slip by. Don't despair yet, Justice. Sir? Right. There's something I'd like uh, made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand. And I'd like to hear it from you. Sure, why not? Very well, the defendant will am amend his testimony. Just one little press, and I've got myself a whole new testimony. All right. I plead silence regarding the murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. But his fingerprints are on it. Objection! Objection! So you say you didn't touch the murder weapon. This grape juice bottle, right? So I said. Something the matter, Mr. Justice. <laughs> Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. Watch this, Mr. Pine. I examined the bottle in question, you see. And it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. OBJECTION! <laughs> No need to shout, Mr. Justice. I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears in, the, in our case. But what about my cords of steel? Anyway, what's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints alone don't prove... Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted. And there can be only one reason for that. Yes. To brain someone with the bottle! Ah! <laughs> Fucking face. Mr. Gavin, I think things just 
took a turn for the worse. Oh, I see no problem, Justice. Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything you'll see. Defendant! Can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. Hmm, not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding some uh, something. There must be some reason. Objection! Objection! Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And what that uh, and what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright. But still, that. Really? Uh, yes. Well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from near the scene by a call uh, by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene. Let's take a look at a diagram of the murder scene, shall we? <coughs> oh, jeez. I'm so glad I have freaking Dr. Pepper here. The victim was murdered in a small room in the basement two floors down from ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get re a reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in the hallway to go above ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. I see, and this is the phone that, uh, that made the call. Wright's cell phone added to the court record. The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime, if he so chose. Yet, he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. You claim he is being uncooperative? <clears throat> nice save, Mr. Gavin. I'd better not waste this. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. Toyed? I assure you, no one is more serious about... What was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment the crime occurred? How can you possibly know this? That's a good question! How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a def decisive witness. <laughs> You're as good as they, uh, they say you are. So someone else was in the room the night of the crime. It must have mean the they witnessed the crime. Everything up till now has been a warm-up justice. Are you ready? Very well, the prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. The witness will state her name and profession. Hold on just a moment. Where is the witness? I summarize that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic looking horns. So I used a little hair gel. Relax, people. I have no fear. If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off. Y you are sure? I swear on my gavel. Please come out. I isn't violence against hair a crime, your honor? Well, if you are sure of it, it's okay. Ahem. Now, the prosecution. Oh, wait a minute! Would the prosecution care to explain the witness's, um, perf per paraphernalia? Uh, yes. She is a professional, Your Honor. The, those are merely the tools of her trade. And that would be... My name is Olga Orly. I'm employed at... Uh, I'm employed as waitress in Borchette Bowl Club restaurant. And why the camera? Of course, it is my pride to serve Borchette that is, uh, that is naming restaurant, but I also perform how it is said other service. I take it one of the, these other services is taking the customer's pictures? Da, da, like for example, like this one. Th that's the defendant. Indeed, on the night of the murder. Man in white hat is one who has gone Kaput. Indeed, that is the victim. Objection, they're not in the room. Order, order! This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop into our laps. It's, it is the same way as I drop cold bowls of bullshit on laps of customers casually. Mmm, then the courts will casually accept this new evidence. Alright, it's on the court record. Now, witness, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in room. The hideout, we call it. Excuse me? The hideout? 
it is room where famous gangsters Badgi, uh, Badgi, Badgi, <laughs> bad guy was arrested. Is room where murder took place. What? Your look of utter surprise. It is lovely. I will post your courtroom. Uh, I will post my courtroom door later for you. Da da. Photos will be numbered, and you will write which ones you want copy of. So there were three people in the room at the time of the crime. The victim, Shaddy Smith, Mr. Wright, and Olga Orly are witness. And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means... Very well, witness! You want to testify to the court about the night's events? Witness testimony. The fateful night. Or that fateful night. That night, customer asked me to deal card for game. It was called Both Players Played With Hats On Da. The victim he played whole time with his hand on locket at his neck. Then last hand is done, but something terrible has happened, Da. That man flew at victim and is strangling him to death. That is incorrect. He did not strangle him. Hmm. In. In. <sighs> And I don't know how to say it. <laughs> uh, I gotta love freaking... Just gotta love how dyslexia works. Who won the game? Isn't it obvious the winner was the victim? Mr. Objection! Objection! That's ridiculous. Um, because... Because Mr. Wright can't lose. Um, <laughs> Justice. Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection. But he hadn't lost in seven years. Take it from me, kid. It happens. I didn't lose a case my first seven years as prosecutor either. It's in indecently. I have some evidence here. These are the poker chips as they lay the very moment of, uh, of the crime. The hand and chips on the side belong to defendant, Mr. Wright. Three sevens, two aces. Those on the far side belong to Mr. the victim, Mr. Smith. Chips, you say? Da, I mean, yes. Imagine that poker is war. Your head is your army, army, and the chips are the spoils. I know that. After all, in my youth, I was known as the poker head of the courtroom number three. I think he means poker face. Hmm, looking at this picture, it does seem that the most of uh, the chips are on the victim's side of the table. Chips photo added to the courtroom record. Or the court record. Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. But he didn't strangle him to death. The night the customer asked me to deal cards for the game, okay? It was cold. Both players played with hats on. Yeah. The victim, he played whole time with his hand uh, on locket to his neck. Hold it! Hold it. His locket? I believe it was good luck, Chanda. He gripped it many times as he played that night. Yes, he must have felt as though it might carry him to the moon and the stars. Though, if it were small enough to fit around his neck, it would have, uh, it wouldn't have much lift. Um, the defense would like a clarification. That is a locket we're talking about. I mean, a pendant with a picture in it, right? Not a rocket? Of course I knew that. It was probably a pendant shaped like a rocket, that's why she called it that. No, a locket's a locket. It doesn't matter what she... It's considered bad form to poke fun at the heart, uh, the heart of hearing in our society. Heart of hearing. Uh, or heart of understanding. So, what happened next? Hmm. Then the last hand is done, but something terrible has happened, Doc. Hold it! Hold it! Something terrible? Eek! <laughs> the defense will refrain from needless shouting! Uh, sorry. I need to seriously reconsider this vocal training thing. Now, Miss Orly, can you tell us what happened? Oh, I was so frightened that I trembled with fear. I think it's, it has to be this one. It's been a while since I played this game. Uh, that man flew at the victim, it's uh, strangling him to death. OBJECTION! Are you kidding me? How is that not a- He can't strangle him to death. Group feels- Oh, pro okay. I was exactly- Yep, they aren't, are they? Freaking- Okay. Mr. Justice, please think the facts over before accusation. Yep. 
I don't think that won me any points. Nope. Okay. I thought it would be... Okay. We'll save it. Because if I lose this, I go back to the last save. Uh... But there's no... Probably this. OBJECTION! Oh, really? Strangled, you say? That's odd. Ah, normal customers only choke on borchette. No, I mean, this report shows that the victim died of a blow to the head. <laughs> Miss Orly! Really, now? Did you witness the crime? Eek! Nice. Hmm. Looking at the picture, it doesn't seem like he was hit. He's still wearing his hat and everything. Yet, it is a fact that he was hit, Your Honor. Here's a photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Well, that's quite shocking, isn't it? His hat certainly was hit! Alright, we got crime photo number two. But, I, I have seen it happen! The defendant, he lunged that victim, his neck! Oh, really, Miss Orley? I think I've caught you in your own lie this time. Justice. I admire your enthusiasm, but perhaps you should think this through once more. W what do you mean? I found a contradiction. There's one thing in her testimony that troubles me. Very well. It seems we should continue the cross-examination. There's such a thing as thinking too much. This horse is dead. Let's stop beating it. There's such a thing as thinking aloud too much, too. At night, customer asked me to make uh, me to deal cards for game. Why do you do that? You were dealing cards. Do you do this often? Da, I am doing this. If customer wishes it, I serve anything. Borchette cards, more borchette. It is my work. It's good to hear of a place that hasn't forgotten the meaning of service. Welcome you to Borchette Bowl, where borchette is as warm as the waitress. Thank you for not handing out flyers during the cross-examination. <laughs> it was cold, both players played with hats on, dog. Hold it. It's already April. How could it be cold? At Borchette Bowl Club, we have pride on authentic rustic Russian restaurant theme. Outside, it is city in spring, but inside, it is always as cold as Mother Russia. No way I'm going there. <laughs> when it comes to hot borchette, Cold is best seasoning, da. I am doing a terrible Russian accent. The victim he played the whole time with his hand on lock it at... It has to be this. Where's the... OBJECTION! You know, there was one curious part about her testimony. Just like Mr. Gavin said. But what does it mean? Mr. Justice! Would you care to explain what it is that you're uh, thinking so intensely about? Recall the testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with his hand on locket at his neck, I believe she said. I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. No, but look at this photograph. Do you see a locket on the victim's neck? Well done, Justice. I'm impressed. You knew you'd be- I knew you'd be able to handle this. But what does it mean? If we are to believe this witness's testimony as is, then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. Lockets don't just disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, so I must have taken it off, no? Taken it off? Wait, you don't mean the defendant wasn't struggling, strangling the victim at all. He was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Ah! Uh. Defendant, what do you have to say to this? Say? Yes. I just noticed this, but... You have something hanging around your neck, don't you? Oh? You mean this? Yes, it's a locket. With a photograph inside. A photo of my daughter. C come again? Mr. Wright, you have a daughter? We confirmed it at the time of the arrest. The picture in the locket is indeed Mr. Wright's daughter. So Mr. Wright has a locket, too. Why didn't I buy that 
this is just a coincidence. Well now, if the results of this poker game led to the murder, perhaps we should hear a bit more about the outcome of the game. Further testimony won't really be necessary. It's clear the defendant lost badly. Miss Orley? You won't testify to the court about the game played between the victim and the defendant? Da! Witness testimony. Serious competition. The game began with 3,500 points in chips for each man. Horse chips, or house chi horse chips. <laughs> horse chips, yeah, because you'll play with horse chips. House chips come in two sizes, uh, small and large. And one who was winning die, it, it was victim. For last hand, defendant play with all chips on table and lose. The moment loss was decided, defendant grabs bottle from table and... Indeed, looking at this picture, it does seem to be uh, a one-sided game. As the court knows, poker was the defendant's life. Failure must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Ah, how many times have I heard these words? I done it in a fit of anger, your honor, and now I... A common tale, but true. <laughs> he thinks the judge watches too many old court movies. <laughs> Mr. Wright said he hasn't lost in seven years, so this testimony must be wrong. Hmm. How in the world is it wrong? The game began with 3,500 points and chips for each man. House chips come in two sizes, small and large. The one who was winning, die, was the victim. Hold it! You're telling me that Mr. Wright, undefe uh, undefeated for seven whole years, was losing? Da, it must have been the most unlucky day for him. I am glad I did not take other picture of him. It would break camera, certainly. The chips, they weren't always uh, to victim's side of table. So you're telling us it was a one-sided game? Da, one-sided and... For last hand, defendant play with all chips on table and lose. Hmm. Well, looking from here, I see these, I see that, but like these cards aren't flipped over. And there's like a deck right there. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, bottle is completely empty. Is there something I'm missing? Ooh, what the heck? Wow, the battery is being held in with a piece of tape. He should just buy a new one. Maybe he can't afford it, or he just doesn't care. Okay. <sighs> hmm. Uh, there's a locket right there. This is a tricky one. Hmm. Hold it! Hold it! Says, last hand. It was largest points of any hand. The defendant's hand, it was excellent. He tried to use it to take victory from behind. It appears that both the defendant and the victim's hands are in this uh, in this picture. This is truly an excellent hand. However, so is the victim's. One with highest numbers wins, so defendant lo oh, one with highest numbers wins, so defendant loses. The victim, Mr. Smith, had a stronger hand than the defendant and crushed him. 
believe that explains what occurred next. Once Card laid down on table, it happened. The moment loss was decided, defendant grabs bottle from table and hold it. hold it. And what happened next? Even to think of it now, I shake and tremble. Da, I did not believe such thing would happen. What such thing? Please, you must believe. I had no idea. How could such thing occur? What such thing? Yet, 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 yet. The defendant had been hitting the victim. Da, I saw it all happen right before me. I saw bottle come down on victim's head. Decisive, isn't it, Your Honor? My witness saw the very moment of the crime. Mm. Remember your first goal is gather information. Yes, sir. Look out, uh, contradiction. Here comes justice. Hmm. Are the chips in this photo all the chips that were used? Da. Da, of course. Something's fishy with these chips. Should I press harder? PRESS HARDER! Maybe you could explain a bit about these chips. Explain what is there to be explained. Poker chips are poker chips. They're not fish and chips. Not a chip off the block. Not a motorcycle chop. Oh, thanks. Now that I've pressed her, I better ask something. What are those chips worth? Are they in dollars or rubles even? Yet, as I've been saying before, it was game not gambling. Hard perhaps for capitalists to understand. Two types of chips, 100 points and 1000 point chips. It is not money, da. Justice. Sir, don't you find her comment interesting? In more ways than one, sir. I have it uh, added to her testimony myself. Well, does the defense want the witness to add her testimony? Add to testimony. Yes. I do think it deserves further uh, scrutiny. Add it to the testimony. I wish I knew where I was going with this. Very well, witness. If you would be so kind. Now, your honor. One kind of chip is worth a hundred. Other kind is worth a thousand. Two kinds in all. So, let's say the red ones are worth a hundred and the gray ones are worth a thousand. I see one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand one hundred, ten thousand two hundred, ten thousand three hundred, ten thousand four hundred, ten thousand five hundred, ten thousand six hundred. There's ten thousand and six hundred points there. So there has to be that's gotta be Okay. I'm gonna save it here and then I'm a I'm gonna use an objection. On that. Objection! You're sure it was the victim who won? Absolutely sure. Objection! It seems our new attorney is a bit confused. A glance at the picture is enough to tell you who won. If you're not in kindergarten. Um, just for safety's sake, could you explain the problem to the court? Of course, Your Honor. In this photo, I see small chips and I see large chips. Tell me, which were worth a thousand points? Why, the big ones, of course, duh. Oh, I thought so too, but then the totals don't add up. Oh yeah, because I... Freaking dumb. The totals? Let's review what the witness told us. Each man started, started with 3,500 points of chips. And the combined total value of the chips were 7,000 uh, 7, points. Yes, it was my calculations are correct. Let's see, three plus one carry the five. Um, they uh, they are your honor now. Look at the this point. Uh, look, look at this photo at alle uh, allegedly shows all the chips. So if 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and then 100, and he only has 100 chips, so 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. So we have 2,900 versus 4,100. Dang, so Mr. Wright was winning. If the big chips are worth 1,000 points and the small chips are worth 100, and you add them up, too much. Is, how much is it? Do it yourself, you aren't in kindergarten, are you? 10,600 points. The chips don't add up. Yeah, it's good luck. 
This clearly contradicts the witness's testimony. But why? How could this be? Exactly, Justice. Now that you know the what, you must determine the why. Right, there's only one possible way to explain this contradiction. Starting points were wrong. This calculation makes the, uh, the answer clear. If the total combined points at the table was 10,600, then each man started the night with 5,300 points. 5,300? That's a rather half-baked score at which at, uh, to start a game. Justice would, uh, justice. Would different starting points really change anything? Huh? It seems the defense's objection was even more half-baked than the score. Uh-oh. Time to head back to the kitchen. Right. There's only one possible way to explain this contradiction. Hmm. Chip count was wrong. The odd thing here is the number of chips, right, Mr. Gavin? Why are you asking me? Uh, just in case. Justice, is your case... <laughs> it's your case you're concerned about. If you're wondering about a chips, just look at the photographs. <laughs> even if you're our judge with his... My failing eyesight could count them. It's not the only thing failing the judge. Let me ask you again. Right. Okay. They were both right. Each man begin the game with 3,500 points. And if all the chips are indeed shown in this photograph, then there can only be... Uh, there can only... There can be only one answer. Well, what is it? The value of the chips? What's the other way around? What? Want to know what I think? The small chips were worth 1,000 points, not the big ones. Madness! Utter madness! Show me the photograph of the chips again! There are six small chips and ten large chips. Why, that does make 7,000 points when you add them up! Excellent work, Justice. It's almost as though you figured it out by yourself. Well, I'm just glad I was the one who said it. <laughs> yeah, process of elimination is great, guys. <laughs> Uh oh But wait! The value of the chips may be different, but they that change is nothing! Indeed, the victim did have the large number of chips still. Ah, exactly. The small chips are a thousand points and the large chips are a hundred. Let's do a little math. Add up the points for each side of the table. Uh, uh. The victim, Mr. Smith, had 2,900, and the defendant had 4,100. Well, no. It seems that Mr. Wright was winning that night after all. That's impossible! My client had even uh, less reason to kill the victim. After all, he was winning! Yeah! Now, Mr. Orley, er, Miss, now Miss Orley, you must have known the true value of the chips, since you were uh, there at the scene of the crime, weren't you? Ah! Uh, eek! Order! Order! It appears our defendant has lost his motive! And Mr. Wright's supposed, supposed defeat never happened! <coughs> we must now ask ourselves whether we can try- Excuse me? What is it, Miss Orley? I did not want to be saying this, but actually, you see, um... See what, Miss Orley? What do we see? In the last hand, there was cheat. A uh, cheat? You, you don't mean a trick? Right? Or do you mean a scam? All the same thing. Yes, there was a cheat in last hand. That is why game ends with chips as they are. Great, just great. First, we have lying. Now cheating. Well, this is this case certainly has taken a turn. For the interesting. Witness, you will please testify to the court. Tell us about this cheating in the final hand. Alright. Witness testimony. The final hand. The last hand both men had full house. There is four of each card in deck from ace to king. If you look at both men's hands, cheat is more obvious. The next moment game becomes arg argument that the defendant's trick was expo exposed. He, uh, he took a bottle in his hand, poor Mr. Smith. 
Miss Orly, why did you not tell the court about this from the very beginning? I thought I smelled a cover up here. Well, folks, it's time to throw back the covers. Hmm, a Ford house in a very high scoring hand. Not easy to make in my experience. That alone is enough to suspect less than speculus tactics. Hmm, Mr. Gavin? Or, um, Mr. Gavin? What's a full house? Lawyers these days. You don't know your pot poker. Can't say this bodes well for your case or career. What is this, some kind of secret court poker ring? Justice. You know the, the terms one pair, two pair, and three of a kind, yes? Um, yeah, no problem. Two cards with the same number makes a pair, and three makes a three of a kind. Good. Now picture a hand with one pair and one, uh, and one three of a kind. That's a full house. Hmm. That doesn't sound very easy to make, does it? Uh, you could, uh, you could see each player's hand in this photo. Is, am I getting this right? Is, are they both full houses? I haven't, I don't play poker. <laughs> I don't play poker at all. I don't really gamble. I, I... I don't really understand. Is there like some way that someone could like <laughs> tell me what's like going on? I'm, I'm so confused. Wow, they both have full houses. We forgot. Okay, so they are both full houses. Never mind. We forgot. Uh, we forgot. There's an easy way to make a full house and go undefeated for seven years. You cheat. Ahem, the defense may cross-examine the witness. If he did cheat in the last hand, that still leaves one important question. Mr. Wright, lost that hand? Who, who's ever heard of a professional con man losing when they cheat? Final hand. Last hand, both men had full houses, yes. There is four of each card in deck from ace to king. If you look at both men's hands, cheat is more obvious. Uh, um, hold it. How is that obvious? How was it clear? Ah, well, the defendant. He played a fifth ace. A fifth ace? I still remember both hands very well. Mr. Smith had his three aces. And Mr. Wright's two. Obviously cheating with a foot, or perhaps I should say a hand. Your Honor, perhaps this could be added to the testimony without, uh, without Mr. Pine's joke. Very well, the witness will add this detail to her testimony, please. Mr. Smith's hand has three aces. Mr. R no, because it's three kings and. OBJECTION! It appears the witness is mistaken. M mistaken? But my name. Look, this piece of evidence clearly contradicts what you said in your testimony. That's the photo of the chips, is it not? Justice, perhaps you ought to explain your point in a way that the judge can comprehend. In other words, use your finger to point out your- Oh, it's this. Ugh. Point out your point. Yes, please point out the contradiction in this photo. A particular point contradicts the witness's testimony. Right here. Take that! Take that! Ms. Orley, in your testimony, you made the following claim. Mr. Smith's hand has three aces. But as you can clearly see, the victim's hand only held two aces. Eek! Well, well, maybe the witness was simply confused. Perhaps it was the defendant's hand that held the third ace in question. Objection! Objection! Take another look at the evidence. As you can see, the defendant also has two had two aces in his hand. Where's the fifth ace? I see cheating, all right, and it's going to be right here in this courtroom. 
Two aces in each player's hand does make four aces total. Hardly proof of cheating. Wait, please. It is true, I have seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating, I swear to you. That's odd. She must be lying. Yet she's the most sincere I've seen her all day. You're right to trust your instincts. Mr. Gavin? Who knows what lies in store for us in the trial ahead. Your Honor, if I may, I have a suggestion. What might that be, Mr. Gavin? If you don't mind, perhaps we might examine the actual cards. The cards? Mr. Pine. Uh, yes, the player's hands that night were set aside as evidence, were they not? The defense would like to request that the cards be shown to the court. Very well, the prosecution will submit this evidence. Which will you examine? The victim's cards or the defendant's cards? If these cards don't prove cheating was going on, nothing will. Now, which of these hands is more suspicious? It's the victim's. It was the victim's hand that changed over the course of the witness's testimony. The defense requests time to examine Mr. Smith's cards. Very well, Mr. Pine, if you would. Very well. All right. Proceed from the victim's hand. Well, time's a-wasting. Get to it, Justice. Yes, sir. All right. When examining evidence, be sure to view it from all sides and angles. Use the arrow keys to turn it each way and B and M to zoom in and out. That should give you a better perspective on the case. Okay, let's do this. Alright, so we want to turn it around and we want to look at the blue card. What? Your Honor, look at this! What are the victim's cards? The back of- uh, the back is a different color! Uh, uh, th that's impossible! But I put that card in right hand! <gasps> what was that, Miss Orly? N n not I merely said it. I have ink. Your Honor, Mr. Gavin, yes. Tell me, what is the easiest way to cheat at poker? To cheat? I'll tell you. One merely needs a friend, a comrade, shall we say, a dealer. Ah! Ah! Wait. So you mean this witness, Miss Orly? She's the cheater, a professional. <laughs> order! Order! Focus, Justice. Time to take advantage of her. I mean, of her mistake. Your Honor, please recall, please recall the testimony we just heard. That's impossible. B but I put the card, that card in Wright's hand. Ergo, Miss o Olga Orly conspired to cheat, not with my client. But with the victim, Miss, uh, Mr. Shaddy Smith. Ooh, yes, my favorite music. Not only did she cheat, she cheated poorly. Therefore, it's not hard to imagine an altercation between her and the victim. What? Wait, you don't mean the defense isn't accusing the witness, Miss Olga Orly, are you? Time for justice. There were three people in the room at the time of the incident. And if Mr. Wright isn't guilty, that means I am. The defense accuses the witness, Miss Olga Orly, of murder. Eek! Dang. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> Mr. Pine, where is your witness, Miss Olga Orly? Um, it appears she has lost uh, consciousness, Your Honor. Hmm, Mr. Justice. Yes, Your Honor. It seems you have presented a new possibility to the courts. One suggested a connection between the witness and the victim, Mr. Smith. And that means this court cannot pronounce a verdict for the defendant at this time. <laughs> what? I did it. I held out. I see no point in prolonging the trial this day. The prosecution will need to make further inquiries. Yeah, of course, Phoenix. Mr. Wright? You, can, you can't end the trial here, Your Honor. Not yet. What nonsense is the defendant spewing now? Think, one of the cards had a different color back. Don't you wonder what it means? What are you doing, Mr. Wright? 
Raising objections right when you're ab uh, about to get off the hook? Ridiculous. Mr. Pine, you of all people should know. Mr. Wright has a talent. For the ridiculous. <laughs> Perhaps we should get to the bottom of things. Let's clear up the facts about the game that fateful night. Ah, we didn't... Alright. As was said before, we altered, uh, we alternated between two decks of cards that night. That was said before. The two decks at the club have different colored backs, blue and red. One color per deck. Why use different colored backs? If we use the same color, the two decks might get mixed. Um, you use different colors and they still got mixed up. We used the red uh, deck for the last game. Hmm. I see, but that's odd. For some reason, I have this impression that you were using the blue cards. Yeah, me too. I'm sure someone said something about blue cards. Whatever. In the end, uh, in the end, one card of the wrong color got into the mix, which means there was cheating. Yes, a card got slipped into the deck, which seemed to indicate cheating. Yet this card raises two serious questions. Apollo. Yes. Let's consider the first question, shall we? Think, in the last game, when was the card swapped? When? There are three uh, broad possibilities here. Could have been swapped before the murder, during the murder, or after the murder. Well, yeah, thanks for the new bulletin, Mr. Wright. Of course it was swapped. Oh? It might be as simple as you think, Mr. Pine. Or it might not be. I'd like to hear what Apollo thinks first. When do you think the cards were swapped? When was the card swapped into the deck? Hmm. I think it was before the murder. Well, it must have been before the murder. You mean during the game? I wonder. Huh? Why? Actually, no, it should have been after. Think what you're playing poker. Which side of the cards face your opponent? The back. That's well, something the poker head of courtroom number three would be likely miss. Sorry, let me think about this some more. When was the card swapped into the deck? It had to be after the murder. Perhaps it happened after the murder? What? That's ridiculous. What's the point of cheating after the hands have been shown? That's silly. Objection! Yes, but tell me. How did you swap cards during the game? I'll take silly over impossible. Take it from me, son. There's a lot of silly in this world, but very little impossible. Oh? Even when the backs of the cards are the different are a different color? If you pulled that during the game, you'd be caught in no time. Ah! Quite true. That would mean that the blue card in question was swapped after the hands were shown after the murder. Okay, this is going past silly and straight on to crazy. I ask again, what's the point of cheating after the game's over? Who would do that? Who indeed? That's one of the mysteries before us. But there's another? Yes, a simple yet decisive question must be asked. Who swapped the red card for a blue card? Who? The game, the murderer, is done, the victim is dead. Only two remaining in the room, alive that is. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and our witness, Olga Orly. Okay, so who was it that swapped the red card for the blue? Olga. Why, it must have been Olga Orly who swapped the cards. She was trying to cover up evidence of the cheating. That does make some sense. Sorry. But there's a problem with that explanation. Huh? The swap cards w uh, was from the wrong deck. Yes, a blue card was uh, stuck un into the red hand. Mixing a card with from the wrong deck when the backs are different colors. Remember that your... T uh, you're talking about Olga Orly. She was the dealer. Do you really think she would make such a novice mistake? Actually, I have trouble imagining even the judge making that mistake. Give it a little more thought, Apollo. Right. Okay, so who was it that swapped them? Someone else? The one who swapped the cards wasn't Mr. Wright, of course. And, well, it doesn't seem like it could have been Olga either. What are you suggesting? That's hardly a logical conclusion, I'll admit. As a defense, I think it only makes sense for you to name Miss Olga at this point. Yes, yes, I know. But, but she was the one who dealt the cards, right? 
I just can't believe she would make the mistake of swapping the wrong color card. And if the card was swapped during the game, I'd, uh, it'd be obvious. <laughs> Something you would like to share with the court, Mr. Wright? Oh, my apologies, Your Honor. I was just thinking how much fun all this is. Fun? How about, com uh, confusing? I have no idea what the defense is claiming, Your Honor. If the one who swapped the card wasn't the defendant, and it wasn't Miss Orley, then who was it? Uh, yeah, well, that is the question, isn't it? Precisely. Huh? I believe we're about to see this case take a new direction. A new direction? We'll find that indeed after the murder. Someone swapped one of the cards in the victim's hand. And that someone made two critical mistakes. I'm sure you're going to tell us that uh, the first was swapping the wrong color card. Because the one who did the swap didn't know two colors of cards were being used. The other mistake was the number of the card. Right. The person replaced the fifth ace the pers uh, with a king. I'm sure whoever swapped it wasn't expecting there to be a fifth ace after all. All they knew was that the game had been won with its full house. So they picked up a king from the table and swapped it. But there's one problem. According to our case record, this person doesn't exist. True. Not until now. But you have to admit the possibility of a fourth person. Though it's more than a possibility. There was someone else there that night at the scene of the crime. What? I believe the judge spoke truthfully earlier. You do make trials ridiculous, Mr. Wright. This trial has proceeded on one cent uh, central assumption. Namely, that at the time of the incident, there were only three people in that room. I believe this new evidence show, we say, overturns that assumption. The problem is that you chose to conceal this information from the court. I suppose that is a problem, yes. Court is adjourned for the brief recess. Mr. Gavin, I'll see you in my chambers during this recess. Certainly, Your Honor. Very well, the trial will resume in 20 minutes. April 20th, 11.52 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. That was quite unexpected, Mr. Wright. To suddenly claim there was another person at the scene of the crime like that. I must ask, is it the truth? Well now, I think you would know that the answer to that. Ah, uh, being mysterious, are we? Sadly, I have no time for mysteries. I'd only ask that you leave the defending to your defense in the future. Otherwise, I cannot guarantee the outcome. I see you haven't mellowed out one bit, Kristoff. Justice. Yes, sir. The judge was summoned, uh, has summoned me to his chambers, so carry on without me. You did well, Apollo. Um, can I ask you something? Sure. That locket you're wearing. Is that really yours, Mr. Wright? Ah, you're wondering about the victim's disappearing locket. Here, you can take a look at it. That's a picture of my daughter in there. Yep. I'm just surprised to hear you had a daughter. Most people are. Perhaps you'll meet her one of these days. One more question. The one who cheated that night, was it you? What do you think? Huh? You know what happened seven years ago. What I did. It's not unreasonable for you to think I might cheat. I never, honest, but... Is it odd that you managed to go undefeated for seven whole years? Want to know something? There's only one game where you can be dealt bad cards all night and still win. Poker. Eh? You see, poker is all about reading your opponent. And that way, it's a lot like a court case. Poker is like trial law? Figure out what your opponent is thinking, and you win. Well, yeah, but that's harder than it sounds. I think not. Try as they might to conceal it. Everyone reveals their true thoughts in the end. Their body language can become a valuable source of information. You're kidding. That witness, for instance, Miss Orly? She would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. 
Did you notice? Uh, no. Come on, who'd notice that? I noticed. Words, words, habits, twitches is all information for the reading. That's the secret to winning, Apollo. Someone taught me, and now I pass the secret on to you. But I'm not worthy. I mean, there's no way I'll pick up on these signals. No, you can do it. Huh? You just don't know it yet. What's he talking about? But you will soon. Ah, almost forgot. One more thing about this case. You should know, I haven't told the truth to anyone yet. What? I knew it. I have my reasons, of course. All shall be revealed. And Apollo, I need you to be there, defending me. I need your power. My, um, power? I had no idea my cords of steel were that special. It's time. The real trial begins now. Do your best. To be continued. Actually, we continued now because we're gonna go through this entire court case. This has only been an hour and ten. So you're in progress. Go to the trial resumes. Continue to on to the next chapter? Yes. April 20th. 12 14 p.m. District Court number two. Court will now reconvene. Has our witness, Miss Ogar Worley, recovered? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, well, she regained consciousness. Perhaps we can hear her versions of the events again. That's the thing, you see, she's quite fatigued. You're looking a bit fatigued yourself, Mr. Pine. Sadly, fatigue is an insignificant grounds for re uh, refusing to testify or prosecute. The defense would like to request that Miss Orley take the stand. Very well, the witness will take the stand. Perhaps you could repeat your name and profession. Or perhaps you'd rather admit that you're a poor liar and a poor, poorer loser. <laughs> Not... Name's Olga Orly. That's the truth. I'm a pro dealer. People call me Olga Quick Fingers Orly. Oh? Oh, really? Want to know something else? I'm not really Russian, and my last name sounds like Oh, really? There's, uh, there, there's. That's the truth. I hope you're satisfied. Nice, pretty, uh, pretty nice butt. Witness. You will tell the court what you were really up to that night. Fine, I'll talk. We had a plan, C. Let me remind you that you are currently under oath. Any further fabrications will have serious consequences. Fine. Witness testimony. Oh, no. Like I said, I'm a pro. That guy Smith hired me to do what I do best. I was planted at the Brochette Bowl Club several days prior to the night of the game, as a waitress. So you were in cahoots with the victim. Not that he needed my help, Smith is a well-known poker player in some circles. But winning wasn't the main purpose of this game. It was about destroying a legend, the unbeatable Phoenix Wright. The plan was simple, elegant really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was... To plant a, co a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, and then deal five aces during one of their games. Then their hands were revealed. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search Wright. He would pull out the planted card, and the trap would be snapped shut. You swapped the cards. Exposed as a cheater and losing on top of it. Uh, it would have made a great double play. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. Indeed! Getting caught red-handed and cheating would ca uh, cast doubt on his prior wins. A seven-year legend destroyed by one little card. That was the plan. Oh, really, or oh, really? How drawl. What appears you made quite the mistake. A mistake? I agree, the trap was elegant. Yet, what happened to that planted card? Hey, that's right. He's lucky I'll give him that. You'd have to be to, uh, you'd have to be to slip free from a trap laid by or Olga Quickfingers or Lee. Or really. Oh, really? The witness would be much cuter if she dip, uh, dispensed with the evil mastermind shtick. 
cute. Who wants to be cute? I'm not cute. I'm bad. You hear me? Bad. When you're through being bad, perhaps you could testify to the court. Tell us about this trap and how it was sprung. Witness testimony. The best laid traps. That night I planted the card like I was supposed to, and Wright lost the uh, lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then the Smith searched him, but the planted card was gone. The trap failed. The next moment, Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. It wasn't me who hit Smith. It was that no good cheating defendant. How is he cheating? Hmm, a surprising frank testimony that still leaves us mostly in the dark. The trap was perfect, I tell you. Perfect. If that rotten cheater hadn't messed it up. Look who's talking. Well, that testimony for what it's worth is all yours, Mr. Justice. With witnesses like her? Who needs criminals? And with defendants like Mr. Wright, who needs prosecutors? <laughs> Truth. Alright. That night I planted a card like it was supposed to. True. Wright lost the, uh, the last hand just like he was supposed to. The Smith searched him. Okay. Let's press on how. Hold it! Hold it. The card disappeared. Yeah, my trump card. The five of hearts. Gone. Without a trace. Poof. Zippo. We searched every nook and cranny, even inside his cute little hat. But the card was nowhere to be found, is this correct? Never in my long storied career, never has Quick Fingers Orly been so readily duped. Oh really? So what did happen to the Five of Hearts? Don't look at me. Why don't you ask that cheating, lying, two-faced defendant? So the Five of Hearts is still missing in action. The next moment, Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. Wait, isn't that a little odd? What's odd? You searched Mr. Wright's er, thoroughly and found nothing, which means he didn't cheat, which means he had no reason to strike the victim. Well, oh. What was that just now? I sensed something. Something wrong, Mr. Justice? No, nothing, Your Honor. What, what to do? Should I press her a little harder? Press harder! Miss Orrin, you're hiding something. What are you talking about? You... you me? Quick fingers orally? Hide something? The defense will... The defense will refrain from baseless accusations. I have no... I have one question for the witness then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Of course it's true. I d did see it, honest. I saw it when right... Oh, right when she touched her ha hair. Like, right there. I saw it when Mr. Wright hit him. Uh, with my own eyes, I saw it. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? That witness, for instance, Miss Worley, she would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. Did you notice? Touching her neck, was it? Whoa, what's going on? The sensation, it's coming into focus. There, that twitch, it's so clear. It's like I could perceive her habit like I couldn't before. Gotcha! Gotcha! Miss Orly, perhaps you are unaware of this yourself. Unaware of what? Whenever you get to a certain part of your testimony, you touch the back of your neck with your left hand. My... my neck? So what? What indeed, Justice. I hadn't noticed anything of the, of the sort. When she says that part of the, the testimony, she subconsciously is recalling something. Her body reacts to the memory that she touches her neck. I'm sure of it. A memory? Would someone care to explain what he's babbling about? This is highly unusual, but let's ask the defense. You claim the witness is remembering something. Maybe you have evidence of this memory to show us. Her habit is scratching her neck whenever she talks about the moment of the crime. 
So what, uh, what would remind her most of the moment of the crime? Miss Orly, whenever you recall the crime that night, you scratch your neck. I'm gonna save it here. I've noticed it happen when you think about the moment of the crime. There must be some reason behind this habit of yours. I believe the weapon that left an in, in, uh, inherensible impression on your neck is this. Take that! Take that! Whenever she talks about the moment of the crime, she touches her neck. And what reminds us more of that moment than this bottle the murder weapon. But something doesn't fit. If you were only the witness to the crime, why would that make you touch your neck like you're in pain? What's he talking about now? It was Mr. Smith, the victim, who was hit, not you. Uh, um... This is a cross-examination, not a cross-wild conjecture. The, the witness's habits, they're completely irrelevant. Justice, I'll admit, I'm a bit confused myself. This is certainly a unique cross-examination. I'll explain later. Just trust me. Now's our only chance to break her. Miss Orly, please testify in details about the moment of the crime. The very moment. Yet, I am knowing nothing. Um, we know you're not Russian. The witness will testify. Please, now. <laughs> ah, fine. He's the one who did it. I didn't let him out of my sight until the cops got there. But like... Like he's the one that called the cops. OBJECTION! Objection! Miss Orly, we have a record here that clearly contradicts what you said. It states that the police were alerted by a report from the defendant. And we know that the defendant left the room, climbed the stairs, and made that phone call from the first floor of the Borshit Bull Club. So explain how you kept your eyes on the defendant when he left the room entirely! The man who picked up a bottle and swung it that night wasn't the defendant. Oh, I remember how cool this was. Showdown time. You dirty cheat! Check his pockets, now! It's gone. The card's gone. You lose. Ugh! Just then, Smith grabbed the bottle from next to right, and he hit me. You, some master of cheating you turned out to be. When I came to, the victim was already dead. Is that it? And that's it. That's why I couldn't reveal who I really was. If I came out with, uh, out that I was in league with Smith, I'd be a suspect for sure. Well, where does this leave us? Madness. This is madness. I'm dreaming. It must have been me who was hit with the bottle and I'm imagining all of this. It appears our prosecution is at his wit's end, and frankly, I can't blame him. Mr. Gavin, what do you think about, uh, what do you think about this turn of events? Mr. Gavin, sir? I believe that as the defense in this case, we are compelled to call Miss Orly a big fat liar. What? Three were in that room, the night of the murder. The defendant, victim, and her. And she has a motive. A motive? Her plot foiled. The witnesses got into an argument with her client, Miss Smith. And the denimut, the deomment of that argument was murder. What? 
I didn't. I'm no killer. It's a trap. Someone's trying to frame me. <laughs> what tangled webs we weave when we practice to deceive. So tangled we catch ourselves in the, in the process. Mr. Wright? Such a hasty conclusion. It's not like you, Kristoff Gavin. What do you say? Why not consider the other possibility? That there was another person in the room at the time of the murder. Right. Like Mr. Wright was saying before recess, a single card was swapped into the victim's hand after the murder. The one who swapped the card didn't know two colors of cards were being used. A fourth person. Ha! This theory again? Your fourth person doesn't exist. Indeed. That's why I decided to bring this case to court. Here, where, uh, where no, there's no escape and no chance for deception. The perfect place to catch the real criminal. The real criminal? And we're in luck. A clue, uh, a clue to the real criminal's identity was kindly provided for us. And right at the beginning of the trial, no less. What? Apollo, perhaps you know what I'm talking about. Um, sorry. Remember what I said. The fourth person who swapped the cards made one critical error. He or she wasn't considering the color of the backs of the cards. Right. But how could such an obvious mistake occur? The cards used for the last game were red. Yet, there is one person here in our court, in our court who thought those cards were blue. Yeah, I had that impression too, but why? Well, Apollo, think you can figure out who it was? It's not me, I swear. Who is this fourth person? Why do I get a... It will always get put on the spot like this. Let's hear what the defense has to say. Who was it? Who thought the cards used in the final game were blue? It was Gavin. Take that! As I expected, your eyes and ears are as sharp as your hair. I was right? Christoph Gavin, you were the fourth person then. But of course Mr. Gavin knows the color of the cards. How would he? As you can see, the photo of the crime scene is black and white. You can't tell which of the cards are blue, the ones on the floor or on the table. But look, you can see the colors in this photo. Yes, but when he said the cards were blue, it was well before this evidence came to light. It is true that the defendant was engaged in the game of poker with the victim, yet it was only a game, uh... Yet it was only that a game in the purest sense a competition, Your Honor. A competition? Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs weathered in blue flame, know the final outcome. Yep, I remember the blue flame. Well, Kristoff? Mr. Gavin? Mr. Gavin, is something the matter? Hmm? No, nothing. Excuse me. It was just so sudden. Right? You aren't seriously accusing me, are you? Oh, Kristoff. You know, even I'd never take a joke that this far. Okay, this has gone... This has gone beyond ridiculous, beyond dumb. This is insanity. The defendant accusing his own defense attorney of murder? I assure you, I'm quite sane. But what possible connection could Mr. Gavin have to the victim? I wasn't aware of that. I had a connection... I wasn't aware that I had a connection to Mr. Smith either. Yes, but Mr. Gavin and the victim have never even met. Well, what if they have? Huh? There is a possibility after all. They may have met that night before the game started. What are you suggesting? Is this the truth, Mr. Wright? Was staying silent about... Well, only one thing to do. Mr. Wright, the defense would like to request that you testify to the court. The defense would like to request no such thing. Mr. Gavin, his testimonies must relate to the case. How could anything happen before the game of poker be related? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Gavin. As I explained before, the defense believes that Miss Orley... Am I to assume you speak for Mr. Justice in this? Yes, the defense, not you. Ha! <laughs> ha! Mr. Wright! Mr. Justice, the matter of Mr. Wright's testimony is up to you. Oh, okay. Does the court, in your opinion, need to hear Mr. Wright's testimony? HEAR THE TESTIMONY! This is Mr. Wright's strategy. He was planning this all along. 
and I intend to see it through. The defense would like to request that Mr. Wright to testify to the court. And to justice. You would betray me, your treat teacher? I'm sorry, Mr. Gavin. This isn't about loyalty. This is about the truth. Very well. The defendant, Mr. Wright, will take the stand, please. Oh, this is... Uh, I remember how intense this game was. Uh, it's so good. I suggested to anybody who... Um, who has never like played Phoenix Wright or... Um, to like play Phoenix Wright. Playing Phoenix Wright is like really fun. Especially if you like murder mysteries and like figuring out how to like get through testimonies. This game is amazing. I suggest going through the first three games and then going to Apollo Justice. They all have the remakes. This came out the tw I think just yesterday. Yeah, just yesterday. This came out the 24th and the re it looks so good. And I'm suggesting you guys play it because it's amazing. All right, before the murder. That evening, Christoph and I had dinner. We sat at the table in this photograph. Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Christoph left. When the trap failed, something hit, uh, Smith hit the wait waitress. The girl was knocked out cold and Smith was uncontrollable. I left to call the police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. That's when I made another phone call to defense attorney Gavin. Mr. Gavin, you were at the brochured ball club the night of the murder? I dined with him rather frequently. And you talked to the defendant on the phone directly after the murder. Quite against my will, I had become involved in a murder. I thought I might be in need of a lawyer, so I called him. You were planning this all along, weren't you, Wright? Just because you wanted to drag me into your little murder trial? The only thing I want is the truth, as I did back then and now. I thought my office was doing you a favor when we took on your defense. It appears that I was wrong. Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. Justice. Sir, he's lying and you're going to expose him. Uh, understood, sir. Mr. Gavin versus Mr. Wright. This can't end well. Why can't I have a normal trial? <laughs> well, Apollo, we're going to go with Mr. Wright's side. That evening, Christoph and I dined. We sat at the table in the photograph. I believe you. J.D. Smith walked in five minutes later after Christoph left. Okay. When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. Yep. The girl was knocked out cold and Smith was in control, bro. I left to call the police. Okay. When I returned, he was dead. Blood streaming from a cut in forest. Yes. That's why I made another phone call to the defense. Oh, Hold it! Could you explain why you called Mr. Gavin? I'd obviously gotten involved in a rather sticky affair, and I figured Kristoff's law office would give me a friend rate, uh, a friend rate of my defense fees. Ah, glad to hear you intend to pay. Oh, I'll pay in full, Kristoff. It was I who got you involved, after all. You may find the price of your defense quite high, my good friend. Quite high. Is this the truth that Mr. Roy was talking about? Justice, you know what you have to do. He's lying. Expose him now. Yes, sir. I have to think. What's Mr. Wright telling, uh, trying to tell me about this testimony? The truth has to be in there somewhere. That evening, Christoph and I had dinner. We sat at the table in the photograph. J.D. Smith walked in five minutes after Christoph. Five minutes. So, the two of them could have passed in the restaurant during that time. That would have been a fateful encounter to me, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wright, what was it you said? Christoph Gavin and Shady Smith may have met. I believe I did say that. Here I was nervous about this meeting. And now we, we hear uh, they just passed in the hall. Hmm, that does seem a little weak as a pretense for murder. Oh, it would be, if that were all that really happened. Come on, Mr. Wright. What are you hiding this time? When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. About this failed trap, this is the same trap that Miss Olga Orly mentioned. The plan was simple, elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was... Uh, to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, and then deal five aces during one of their games. 
When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search right. He would then pull out a pla the planted card, and the trap would snap shut. You swap the cards. Just like that, the legend would be dashed into two pieces. Yes, a harmless prank in the essence. It was by a quirk of fate that I happened to discover it. A quirk? I happened to, uh, to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. The card she planted. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the five parts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. An empty bottle of grape juice? The murder weapon. Yes, I rolled it up and shoved it in. The colored glass makes it hard to see. Hmm, a, a battle of wits between the deceiver and would-be deceiver. That sounds like terrific drama. Card inside the murder weapon. That's strange. Did the police miss it in their investigation? Maybe I'll take a look. Yeah, excuse me. Mr. Wright, the poker head of uh, courtroom number three approves of this battle of wits. Also, we are going to go take a look at this. Uh, I stole this card. Please revise your testimony with the new information. Discover the trap during the game and dispose of the card in the bottle. Maybe it's there now. But it's not there. OBJECTION! Um, Mr. Wright, if I may... Yes? I've examined the bottle, and I don't see any card in here. Hmm, no. What? Mr. Wright! Surely! Isn't all... Dot 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 isn't all you have to say for yourself. Can't say that I know what happened to the card. I did put it in that bottle, however. Huh? Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out. Oh, and a sixth person could have helped. Mr. Gavin, Mr. Wright is your client! My apologies, Your Honor. I won't have you dis disparaging our investigation either. We looked inside that bottle. There was nothing. So what's going on? Is Mr. Wright hoodwinking us again? Or did the card just disappear? In any case, please continue the cross-examination. I'm afraid decisive contradictions call for decisive evidence. Oh? Push him harder, Justice. Break him. It's just you and the witness in the ring. Go for the KO. Why do I get the feeling we're not on our client's side anymore? That evening, Christoph and I had dinner. We sat in the table. It's a photograph. Shady Smith walked in five minutes later. I discovered the trap. Disposed of the card in the bottle. The girl was knocked out cold. I spent the control and left the cold police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. That's when I made another phone call. To defense, turn and gap. Hmm. Alright, we're gonna question... This again? Why in the bottle? I perceived my opponent's intent immediately. I'm used to ent uh, entrapment, you see. I knew what was coming. Haha, -ha, so you struck first. Uh, struck first, I, I like that. I know every trick in the book. They don't work on me. At least when you get lucky and stick your hand in your pocket, they don't. Uh, the girl was knocked out cold and Smith was uncontrollable. I left to call the police. You made the call to the police from the first floor of the restaurant, correct? Exactly. Cell phones don't get a signal down in the hideout. Was anyone else on the first floor at that time? Not a soul. It was in the middle of the night, after all. So there in the darkened restaurant, I called the cops. After making the call, I returned to the hideout. It didn't seem right to leave, to leave the injured wa uh, waitress alone. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. And when you returned, the victim was already... dead, yes. I'll admit, I was a little startled when I walked in. A little? He was bleeding from his forehead, after all. I guess it'd be, I'd be startled, too, if I walked in on a scene like that. That's when I made an, another phone call. When I made another phone call to Attorney Gavin. 
Could you explain why you called Mr. Gavin? It obviously got involved in Red Sticks. Yeah, I know we did that one. Uh, fault that brawl. Fight time. Alright. Exposing for now. Yes, sir. I have to think. Stretch and tell me. The truth was has to be in somewhere. Not even. Okay. What's dinner about? You had dinner with Mr. Gavin. Yes, he dines with me at the Borshuk Bowl Club quite frequently. We were enjoying a usual dinner at our usual spot as usual. Usual. I always eat at the table closest to the piano. I see. Where Mr. Smith was sitting. So the plates and such on the table were from your dinner. Indeed. The remnants of my meal with Kristoff. We dined for two hours, then Kristoff left after that. Jamin... Five minutes. Yeah. Faithful encounter. Alright. No, we already did this one. I don't know which one I need to press on. I believe I did say that. Yeah, I was all nervous about this meeting. And now we hear that you're just... They just passed in the hall? Hmm. It's all weak. It would be if that were all that really happened. Aw, oh, Mr. Wright. What are you hiding this time? Discover the trap in the game and dispose of the card in the bottle. I feel like I'm missing something. The thing is, the bottle's not next to... It was not next to right, but the, the victim. Hmm. All right. Appetite for murder. Truth that Mr. Ryan was talking about. No! Not it. Okay. Right, time to load that back up. Yeah, let me just go back to here. Alright. I thought it was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's been some time. And then Kristoff and I had dinner. We sat at the table in this photograph. Yes. James Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. There's gotta be something here. Time of death. I don't... Hmm. I don't see it. Set the trap during the game and disposed of the card in the bottle. It almost knocked out cold. We made the call to the police from the first floor of the restaurant collect. Exactly, cell phones don't get a signal down here in the hind up. Was anyone else on the first floor at that time? Not a soul. It's in the middle of the night after all. So they're in the darkened restaurant. I called the cops. In making the call, I returned to the hideout. It didn't seem right to leave an injured waitress alone. I returned, he was dead. Blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. OBJECTION! Mr. Wright, if I may... Yes. Take a look at this photograph of the crime scene. See, the victim here, he's wearing a hat. I wouldn't think you could see blood on his forehead. Good point. Justice, next time you point out an inconsistency, put a little more oomph into it. Mr. Wright, can you explain this to the court? Ah, I forgot to mention something. I was the one who put that hat on his head. Eh? You? You put the hat on the dead man's head? He wore it through our entire poker game. After calling the police when I returned to the scene, his head was in full view. Shining bright, just like in this photograph. 
and I picked up his hat off the floor and put it on his head. Why would you do such a thing like that? All I can say is I'm sorry, but that's the only thing I touched at the crime scene. So, Miss Orly didn't see it. It be uh, it being the victims or his head. I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the only one who witnessed his head. Ah, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? <laughs> Pardon. It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. Hmm. Hey, he's still our client, isn't he? I believe that's enough of that. Um, Mr. Gavin? This witness's testimony is more like a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I'm beginning to see how you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Well... You certainly have a unique way of threatening your clients, Kristoff. I never knew. I believe it was on, it was you who threw the first stone. Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell the truth about this case, it's now or never. Don't be misled. I haven't told a single lie here. Eh? When I noticed the trap, I put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. And when I put the hat on the victim's head, let's just say I had a reason for doing that as well. A reason? That reason is right here. Your cell phone? That night? Recall that I spoke with defense attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in case I recorded our conversation. What's this? Now that we're all here, I see no reason why I shouldn't pe uh, play it back for the court. Kristoff, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? Game not going well. Something like that. That gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good? He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him hard. You mean someone cracked that flawless bone chin up pet? It wasn't you, was it? Me? Please, the cop should be here any minute. I'm in your hands, should it come to that. Bone chin up plate? A kind of... Porcelain, very smooth and shiny, and not plate, but pate. I believe he was referring to a certain gentleman's balding forehead. Mm. The court appreciates the defendant's discretion in not indicating my forehead. <laughs> Wait a second, something's not right about that phone call. So after Mr. Gavin ate dinner with you, he left the Bortrit Bowl Club. Yeah, the phone call. Yeah, how would he have known if, if he had a freaking balding head if the hat was still on his head when he saw them? Most well, certainly. Then then how did he know? When did he see this bone chi china plate? Oh, that's right! Yes, that was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Troubled, I returned to the crime scene. And when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain this to the court. Exactly, how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So, this is your reason. The reason why you put the victim's hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin. It's come down to this, has it, Phoenix Wright? Order! I will have order, Mr. Payne! Yes, Your Honor. I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear Defense Attorney Gavin's testimony? Um, uh, well, as the prosecutor, I... Very well. We'll break for ten minutes, after which Mr. Gavin will take the stand for a cross-examination. Are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, Your Honor. Very well. This will be the final recess for the day. Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judge's chambers. Who would have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Here she is. Huh? What? Hello, sir. Please pick a card. What's all this about? Uh, is this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card? The card you have chosen is magical. Use it wisely, and the game is yours. That's all. An ace? Where do I remember that card from? <laughs> Mr. Smith's hand has three aces and Mr. Wright's two. It is five aces in all. It is true, I have seen it. 
The fifth ace. There was ch uh, cheating, I swear to you. The missing fifth ace. Wait, this is this blotch of red. Is this blood? You have your trump card. Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw the truth. My father's fate is in your hands. I know you can do it. They did her well. Her redesign is good. This blood-stained card is my trump card for finding the truth. I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. That girl, I'd seen her recently, but where? That's when I made the connection. Bloody Ace added to the court record. Received from a mysterious girl. Could this be the missing fifth ace? April 20th, 2.45 p.m. District Court number two. Court will now reconvene. Defense Attorney Christoph Gavin, would you please take the stand? Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. Um, well, Mr. Uh, the witness state his name and occupation. Is this farce necessary, Your Honor? Believe me, far stranger than things have gone on this courtroom. Fine, I'll play along. First, there's one thing we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? The secret, I'm guessing, means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. Forgive my curiosity, but what is it all this fellow, uh... What is it about this fellow's head? Your honor seems to have an inordinate interest. In Objection! Objection! Yeah! Phoenix Ray! Let's go! <laughs> I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. Yeah! The Phoenix Ray music! They did add it! Ugh! Mr. Wright? What do you think you're doing, Wright? Well, things sure look different from the other side, you know what I mean, Apollo? Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taking it off except for that one time. That one time being the instant he was hit. Oh! When Mr. Wright returned from report, uh, reporting the crime, the hat was laying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, you would have had to have been there in the hideout at the time of the crime. In other words, I'm in other words, I must be the real killer is what you're trying to say. Not bad, Paul. Oh, the the the, the freaking ah oh, the art is amazing. <laughs> Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the courts. What? Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my clients, Mr. Wright. Yet, I'm afraid in the current situation, I see little reason to hide anything. Very well. Allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. Finally, you may begin your testimony. Tell us, how were you involved in the events of that faithful night? Witness testimony. That faithful night. The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead as he appeared in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time, so I left. That's when I, the call came from Mr. Wright. From Wright himself. So you witnessed the murder. For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are uh, on Mr. Wright's defense team? Your testimony is clearly disadvantage disadvantage of your client. What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them what you uh, you saw the scene of the crime through the little that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright, you had to say that, because that was the only probable window of the opportunity, right, Apollo? Oh. Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not to defend it. 
Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. Cross-examination. That fateful night. Alright. The rage I sense in that man troubled me, so I return. Alright. Final cross-examination. Uh, I... The rage I sense in that man that night troubled me, so I return. Why? Oh! That man. You mean Mr. Smith. He was different from the other customers. His aura, shall we say. I knew he had a serious poker player. No, he was a serious poker player. But it was more than that. So then you knew the true nature of your client's job? Of course. But I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Well, it makes sense that he'd know. They were friends, after all. Worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see! What happened then? I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. Hold it! The little window? You mean the one used to keep watch up the stairs? Yes. A relic of the ancient past. The black uh, marketers used it, I believe. Why did you go through the trouble of peeking in through the window? Wouldn't it have been easier just to open the door and go into the room? I didn't want to upset rights, you see. Upset Mr. Wright? Yes. What if my fears had been unfounded? I'd be walking in there, uh, walking in on their match. Bad form, to say the least. So far, everything he says makes sense. It must have been right after the murder took place. How do you know, uh, it was right after the murder? Really? No need to shout, Justice. Er I was just getting to that part of my testimony. Ah, there he is. The coolest defense in the West. We know and love. Even when you're standing up there on the witness stand, something's never changed. I was afraid to ch uh, ch change too, right? But you haven't. You and that overbearing personality of yours. With friends like these, who needs enemies? Truth. The victim was dead as he appears in the photo. By photo, you mean the second photograph of the crime scene. Precisely. You see, he wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head when he was dead. And then Mr. Wright came along and replaced his hat. Can you describe the scene of the crime for us? A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hands. Those were the only three in, uh, at the scene of the crime. Yes, as far as I saw, at least. Then we're back to where we started. The killer w uh, was the defendant, from Phoenix Wright. Who else could have been? But why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Wright. Even after seeing what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Also, how, if you look through the window, how do you see the, the freaking girl on the floor? Hmm. There must have been someone else uh, there that, uh, at the moment of the crime. Justice, I just said I saw no one, not a soul. But that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Ah, yes, this mysterious forest person. Who would con uh, conveniently be the real killer, I suppose? Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question then. Tell me, what possible reason did the real killer have to swap cards in the victim's hand? Hmm? Perhaps you could show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary? How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. The fifth ace, right. Well, Mr. Justice, the question of why the killer would swap out the, uh, a card has been raised. Could you point out a reason? I don't know if I showed the evidence yet. I think I, I think I showed it. It's now or never. The defense would like to pre present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? Take that! My reason is, uh, this. Is that an ace? Why? Why, it's got blood on it! 
Right next to the spade! What? This is insane! Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could this be? Could this be the missing fifth ace? Inconceivable! How could you? What are you doing with that card? Um, well, that's the thing. Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It's just a flat, fishy card from some fishy girl. Oh, that card, it's mine. That is, I picked it up at the brochure bowl club that night, after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her uh, stock and trade -ups. Objection! No, impossible, unacceptable. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? What? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene, the real killer. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? A reason for... for the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime? Where are you going with this? Take another look at the photo. And at the victim's head. At the moment of the, uh, of the crime, his hat fell onto the floor. And a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down to the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood. Objection! R regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right. Regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer uh, points of our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. What are you talking about? You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you know. Objection! This is baseless conjecture, baseless. Objection! Objection! Yeah, the right finger! Oh, I assure you, it's quite based. What? It's amazing, really, how a single drop of blood on a single card could lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Yes, try picturing the scene of the crime. In your head. Oh, this is so cool! The murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And before the killer swapped the card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem with this scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on a card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses? Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? Take that! Well, isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look, the victim was struck on the head, sending him back in the chair. You'd think any blood would fall behind the body, not onto the table in front of him. Ah! Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, the blood would fall on the floor, not on the cards. Why, that's right. So, what does this mean? In... In... Christ, uh, yeah, we are sitting in swivel chairs. Considerably worse. Swivel chairs? Oh, man. Apollo, try turning the chair around. The chair was facing the other way? It would have it would have to be. So we have to assume that at the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing as the seen in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We know now the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But this creates another significant contradiction. Uh, again? 
Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victim, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses. Whose lo this location creates a... Whose location creates a contradiction if the victim is facing away? It would be the killers. Take that! The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where he's indicate what uh, where his indicator currently is? I would think it'd be quite hard, yes. Yes, but what are you saying makes no sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn in, uh, turn to face the wall in the middle of the game? I believe a significant reason will soon come to light. What? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it on the diagram. But, but... There's no room to put on a marker where the killer should be. Don't worry, let's think it uh, through and see what we find. We know the victim was facing towards the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget uh, about everything else. Where would the killer have to be standing to strike our victim in front? It'd be right here. Take, Take that! The killer had to be standing well up here. You get points for flair, but that is about all you get. Eh, I thought I was on the t something here, t there too. I hardly see a point that standing there would be impossible. The victim is facing a solid cupboard. Or are you claiming that the killer climbed the cupboard and hit him from above? Ha, ah, it's simple logic, really. If this was the only place the killer could have been standing, then that means that at the very moment of the crime... Wait, I know. At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there. Watch this now? I mean, that's the only explanation, right, Mr. Gavin? Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to example the uh, examine the cupboard in the hideout immediately. Bailiff, send a, t a team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Ah, Your Honor. What? There's one more thing uh, your men should look for. Please, give this to the bailiff. Hmm? Mm, yes, I see. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. But let's forge ahead here while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the time of the crime, then this cupboard wasn't here. Which means, Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Thank you. As you can see, the cupboard was the problem. At the time of the murder, it has to have been as shown here. Now everything is in place to, uh, the, to rec uh, reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my. What's this? Well, what is it now? Look at the diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears we found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh, dang. Notice something, Apollo? Our line of uh, deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now, Dan, Mr. Justice, please point out the new contradicting indicator. Is it the victim, the killer, the witness, the second witness? Which indicator in the, this diagram uh, contradicts it's the second witness? Take that! Um, about this cupboard, are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would completely cover up the window to the stairs. Ah! That's right. Someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Someone like Mr. Gavin! What did you say? Oh, is the coolest defense in the West losing his cool? Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. 
that someone was, while the, the window to that room was blocked by a cupboard. A cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain to the court exactly where did you witness the crime scene from? Excuse me! Excuse me, Your Honor! Order! This is a court of law and I will have order! We've just received word from our investigative team at the Brochure Bowl Club. They've examined the cupboard in the hideout, Your Honor. Oh? And what did they find? Well, Your Honor, it turns out there is a secret passage behind it. What? Ah, uh, yes, I believe I mentioned something of the sort before. This is one of the tr uh, the tricks to the br uh, the room many of our regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that, now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a, uh, a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal going-ons. Never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So the room has a secret passage. Where does it go? The other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses could get away from the cops and enjoy a cold bowl of brochette, no doubt. Just like our killer. Yeah. You see where our line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it, but I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card for, <laughs> for the last hand. At the time of the murder, the window was blocked, and the victim's hat was only off his head for a few minutes before Mr. Smith's murder. And Mr. Wright returns from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have uh, seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin, I want to say something. Hmm. Dare I ask what really happened that night? Actually, I think we could probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with Destiny. There, he crouched hidden in the secret passageway behind the cupboard, holding his breath, waiting for the right moment. Then it, the chance came, and he took it. Ink! What? Why did you do that? Wait here, I'll get help. Miss Olga Orly was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. But his time was soon to come, Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops. Leaving Mr. Shady Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Then our killer stepped out from the secret passage into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. He wheeled his chair around to look and... After the deed was done, the criminal must have seen the blood on the card. He would have, of course, realized the need, the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood, told, was the whole story of the crime. Too bad for him he didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have uh, noticed the cards on the, on the floor, and the fact that they were all red. <laughs> not over yet. Well, it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. I'm truly, truly sorry I had to see this day come, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin? Mr. Pine! Er, um, yes, your honor? The prosecution will continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant here is hereby cleared of all suspicions. Ugh. Believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin, but I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest immediately. Uh-oh. Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. It's not every day you get uh, get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber would, have taken in by, would be taken in by such a low-grade parlor trick. Um, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion? This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. 
Mr. Ray hasn't proven anyone's guilt or innocence here. What has he done in, uh, in use illegal evidence to put the blame on someone else? And not just anyone else, but me, his own defense attorney. Illegal evidence? Objection! Objection! Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin. Is there still any reason uh, at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course. This bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking? How did you intend to explain, uh, explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Pine? Er, uh, actually, yes. The fingerprints on the bottle were um, upside down. I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. The courts in, uh, in, in this case de uh, demand an explanation. I can think of only one reason why this would, uh, would hold a bottle upside down, and that is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. Well, Your Honor. Hmm. Ah, see how the uh, see how the caught fish squirms to the last. Well, Apollo. Yes. Your boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still, but I'm sure you can come up with a, a suitable explanation, just like that. Um, yeah, just like what? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to? Don't let him trick you into thinking this explanation is the only legitimate one. Um, is there really an another? Take another look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there in plain sight. How about you just say the answer in plain words? It's that's that picture. It would be a hasty to deliver a verdict with unanswered questions, indeed. Well, Mr. Justice, Mr. Gavin said that the, uh, that the court in this case demand an explanation. Don't worry, Justice won't leave until justice. Justice won't leave until justice is done. Perhaps the defense would care to enlighten the court. Okay, we're gonna save it here. I I know what I think it is. It's been a while. I'm pretty sure it's the the picture with him and Shady or Smith. Yeah, Shady Smith. 